Hey, I'm Randy, and I'm the Cheap Audio Man. Here at the Cheap Audio Man, we don't feel like audio equipment, amps, speakers, DACs, turntables, reel-to-reel -reel things, cassette players, should cost as much as buying all your implements to keep your yard and your landscaping neat and clean. Like a, like a, a trimmer or a weed eater, as we used to call them growing up. Maybe a bush shrubbery, shrub trimmer, shrubbery trimmer, a blower, which incidentally, I think blower, the, I think those should be outlawed because that's all I hear every morning throughout the spring and the summer. We need to figure something out. They, that thing needs active noise cancellation. Okay. I don't know how we're going to do it. But maybe if anybody has any thoughts on that, uh, pop it into the uh, comments section. Maybe we can file a patent, figure something out, okay? So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Micah RB42 that everybody else has talked about. Today's sponsor is john s's star wars empty head mugs when you want to drink coffee out of a hollowed out skull of your favorite star wars character grab one of john s's hollowed out fictitious science fiction star wars empty head empty skull mugs it's fun to drink coffee or any other beverage out of a, a fictitious character's vacant skull. All right, build quality specs and all that good stuff. I'm gonna put that back on, bring it over here, show you that I can do this with a... It's a very, very little speaker. Doesn't mean it sounds a little though. Four inch woofer. Oh yeah. Three quarter inch soft dome tweeter. Um, it's got some rounded edges on it, as you can see. Rear ported, uh, five-way binding posts on the back. Or I don't know if they're five-way. I don't know. They take a banana clip. The, the odd thing is, though, they're uh, normally on a speaker. If you're going over to the top of it, the left post is positive. The right post is negative. These are switched here. Okay. So just make sure you, you hook them up properly. Great magnetic grill. Oh yeah, I like that. Very nice, strong, magnetic girl. Uh, frequency response in room 50, I think up to 20,000 hertz. Mm-hmm, 83 dB sensitivity, okay. It's pretty low, but I wouldn't be super concerned. I ran it off the Vista Audio Spark, 20 watts per channel, got it as loud as I wanted it to. So I, I wouldn't freak out about that 83 dB sensitivity. The uh, impedance is rated between four to eight. I've never, I've never quite heard that before, but that's fine. Again, I didn't really have an issue driving it with anything, including the Vista Audio Spark, the Fozzy Audio DA 2120C. C is in Charlie. Okay. Also, the Topping MX3. Drove it fine. Drove it fine, okay? Overall build quality is great. Uh, they have a pretty significant crossover in there with an 18 dB slope. And what that means is that it's getting the stuff to, to fall off. So it's either getting the tweeter or the, the woofer to fall off very steep. So like six dB would be here, 18 is like here, okay? So somebody put a lot of thought into this crossover and that's a good thing. And I think you can tell because of just how much sound you can get out of it. All right. Let's talk about soundstage and imaging. Soundstage and imaging on this speaker is, I think, probably one of the biggest standouts. Um, was I surprised? No, because I've heard speakers like the Dolly Spectre ones, small size, still soundstage and image well. Now that does have a bigger horn slash waveguide or whatever you want to call it. So I was pleasantly surprised that out of 
yeah, because there's not a huge waveguide on here, I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised on just how good of a job it did. Uh, hey Ho by the Lumineers. Mm, dead center. Dead center. And like, I mean, is there something in there? Is there a speaker there? Dead center. Uh, wherever I may roam, Metallica came right. Not super far right, but again, these were on my desk. I did run these on stands too, and Soundstage got better, uh, but I, I, I don't think that that's the use case scenario. I don't think a lot of people are going to be putting these on stands, unless they're itty bitty little stands, okay? What else? More human than human. Uh, the beginning of the song, the electronic noises going back and forth, did a great job. It's the first one starts right in the middle and then it just starts ping ponging back and forth and they did a great job. Uh, vertical imaging, I didn't really hear that. I didn't really hear anything above the speakers. I heard things outside the speakers. I heard things deeper, drive in, drive out by Dave Matthews Band. Great, very good. So there is some depth to that soundstage as well. Overall, one of the standout parts of this speaker is their sound staging and imaging. Let's talk about bass. All right, bass on the RB42s is phenomenal. It is head scratchingly awesome for the size of the speaker and the size of the driver. The only other speaker I've seen that pulls this off with the driver size is the the first generation Andrew Jones Pioneer, and that's a that's a, that's a bigger enclosure. Now, as far as like volume, I'd have to take a look at them because the micas are very deep. So, but as far as presence of bass and bass extension. I don't know if I've seen something this good or well heard something this good from a four inch woofer. It's excellent. Killing Strangers, Marilyn Manson. The presence was there. Now I will say at lower volumes, this is an 83 dB speaker, remember? So at a lower volume, lower power, I felt like I needed to get get some more juice into them before that bass really came alive obviously placement is going to play a role in this as well i had these well when i when i had them on my desk they were 12 12 inches from the wall thereabouts uh you get them closer to the wall you're going to get more bass presence but it could get it could bleed over to the mids a little bit if you're getting that if you're using room gain to kind of address any of the thinness but i will say the bass is not thin by any means. I'm just saying at lower volumes, you might not hear as much bass presence as you want. Okay. Intergalactic. Again, not super deep roll off, but again, we can't expect that. We, we're not, we cannot expect that from a speaker of this size. But I will say a speaker of this size, it probably did the best I've ever heard. Tonally, I felt like it sounded fine good I'm, i can't i'm not great at like bass tone and bass tonality and i need i need to work on that and i need to get better about it bass drums sounding like bass drums stand up bass sounding like stand up bass um so what kind of blue miles davis great very 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 great okay so let's talk about mid-range <laughs> Mids on, on the RB42, again, very good. I didn't feel like the mids were scooped out as far as how they fit, how they fell into the frequency response. Rooster, Alice in Chains, MTV Unplugged. The acoustic guitars had body. They sounded great. The voices, the harmonies, just yummy. It's yummy. It's yummy. Where the mids may hmm, maybe fall a little bit shorter than other speakers is detail. So the acoustic guitars didn't have like um, Redemption Song by Barb Marley at the beginning. Do, 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 
do 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 ba do 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 okay so everything's there everything sounds great you don't quite hear that vibrating guitar string like you can't just mm, like there it is it's just a little bit lacking but because of that you also aren't having sibilance issues sibilance issues with like Alanis Morissette King of Pain off the MTV Unplugged that song on certain speakers can be pretty shablant so that was not present on the RB42s it's kind of a zero sum game here so if you don't if if you're if you're close to sibilant or you're sibilant then chances are you're going to be more detailed so those guitar strings are going to seem more realis realistic if you're not sibilant then maybe it's a it's a balancing act right and on shoot to thrill my go-to mid-range song the initial guitar out of the right speaker should come in back stepped back but have body and metallic crunchiness the metallic crunchiness was not quite there on these and that's fine that's fine it's fine okay it's mid-range is great mid-range i feel like mm, flat lacks the tiniest bit of detail other than that it's it's great and at this price range they're doing pretty good okay they're doing pretty good let's talk about treble treble okay oh i also forgot on the mid-range uh hello by adele her voice seems smoky and just mm, mm. Sounded really good. Sounded really good. And that's the first time, like, her voice was just kind of, like, mysterious, I guess. And, like, I felt like she was in a jazz clubish kind of vibe. Just the, oh, I'm not, I'm not saying throaty, but just, like, I don't know, smoky. And, and I don't know if that makes sense to anybody, but that that's, that's what I thought. Trouble! Uh, Sinner Man, the 16th us. Had body, had great body. You could tell it was a hi-hat, but again, we're going back to this a slightly lack of detail. Okay, slight lack of detail. But unless you are in the most critical of listening and you're sitting down and you that is just your thing, like you need extreme clarity, it's not going to matter. Everything was good. Everything was good. Okay. Just liked a little bit of detail. I feel like the treble's a bit rolled off here. The good thing is it's not veiled and rolled off. So there still is clarity there. It is just not as apparent. And it's not extreme clarity like you would get from hmm, Emotiva, Air Motive B1+. Plus. The con uh, the Yamo C ninety three twos, okay. Even the Yamo S series is 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 clearer than than these, okay. Another way to die by Jack Black and Alicia Keys. Jack White, Randy, not Jack Black. Although that would be pretty cool. Tenacious D. Um. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. The piano at the beginning, left speaker, it's uh, all the way on the right on the piano. That's where they say, that's where they tinkle, 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 tinkle piano keys. Um, again, lack of detail. Um, not super realistic, like, okay, there's a piano in the room, but that's okay. All right, so the overall theme of the treble is it is slightly rolled off, not quite as detailed as some speakers um but clear just a little bit softer than some of the other frequencies okay trouble's fine if you'd like that sound signature okay what are my final thoughts final thoughts on the 
Micah RB42 is, I think this speaker should be celebrated for sure. I think, um, I think, I don't know if this speaker's been hyped, but it's very well regarded and rightly so. The thing about this speaker though, is it is, it de definitely has a flavor. And that flavor, to me, is really synonymous with the ELAC Debut B6. Very similar sound signature. Very similar sound staging and imaging. Same thing, rolled off highs with uh, not a ton of detail and slightly mm, just softer. Okay. Very similar to the ELEC WB6, as you get more power, as you get that SPL up, some of that trouble starts to come back and the bass even really starts to come alive. So I felt like 65 dB for me in near field listening, which is about three foot away, I felt like that's when the speaker really came to life, really balanced out and was really great for me. This is this the speaker is not a critically listening speaker. Oh my god, everything's perfect. This is a speaker that you put on while you're doing something else, you're working, and all of a sudden you will hear some magic. And you'd be like, whoa, okay. Can you critically critically listen to the speaker? Sure, absolutely. It's not the clearest thing. There's not as much mm, realism from like the top of the mids all the way through the through the higher end of the frequency response it should be celebrated due to its size what you can get out of a speaker of this size at this cost i think this speaker has limited used cases and i think that's limited to a desktop solution maybe two channel in a very small room uh, it does come with these cool things so that you can prop it up a little bit, mess with the um, placement. Apartments, um, dens, desktop situation, great. Okay, other speakers that I've listened to that have a similar use case scenario, the Dolly Spectre ones. Kind of a similar sound signature. The Spectres, I think, are more neutral. And... They soundstage and image about the same, and that was a very good thing about that, the Spectre Ones. Um, Micas are more rolled off, okay? But the Dollies are also $100 more, okay? Hmm. Is this a recommendation? Yes, if you're in the right application. This is not going to play in a, in a big room. It is not. It's not. Can they get loud? Yeah. They're super so super low sensitivity. So your amp needs to have not a ton of juice. I mean, I ran them off the Vista Audio Spark just fine. Got them loud as I wanted to. I think if you have a lot of dynamic tracks, if you're using these in any type of TV or home theater usage, you're gonna want you're gonna want some power. You're gonna want some power to handle that. Okay. At 83 dB sensitivity, you're gonna want that power. You're going to want that power. Great speaker in the right application. You need to know, though, going into this, that this is not a super exciting, super lively U-shaped speaker. This is kind of um, pretty flat and then a slight roll off at the top. Okay. Audiophile-ish, this is a great speaker. Again, very similar to Elac Debut B6, very similar to the uh, PSB P5, the way it sounds. Okay. Great speaker, if it if that's what you want and that's the application you want. Okay, if you want to support the channel, link to my Patreon is in the in the description. Patreon.com/slash/cheapaudioman. Every Sunday night we do Zoom meetings. We also have uh, patron only content. You can also use any of the links in the description. Most of the time, those are affiliate links, which means if you buy and you click on the link and you buy anything, then I get a commission off that. You can also sign up for Amazon HD Music for free. I have two test track or two playlists in the description. One is my test tracks, so all the songs that I use when I'm uh, listening to a speaker critically, and then uh, also the Satanic Panic playlist is in there. Some 80s metal, very good. Also worked on a new playlist called Light Warmers. 
it's a little bit more uh, contemporary 80s music. A lot of fun. Been listening to that. If you like the video, consider subscribing. Um, like the video. Whatever you want to do, leave me a comment. Reach out to me. So, don't binge watch Netflix or anything. Binge listen, listen to your favorite streaming service or CD or vinyl record or reel to reel or cassette tape and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.